Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Leadership Styles, Best Practices, and Success Tactics. This is your weekly guide to mastering the art of leadership. In this series, we'll explore different leadership styles each week. We take a deep dive into the essence of the leadership style. We also talk about when and how to effectively employ it, the challenges it addresses, and strategies for successful implementation. I'm Dee Hoke, managing partner and co-founder of Ignite Purpose USA, and I'm joined with my co-host, Ed. Hello, everyone. I'm Ed Jarecki, president and owner of Jarecki Business Coaching and Concepts and a focal point business and executive coach. Together, we're going to navigate the diverse landscape of leadership, providing you more insights, more tools to enhance your leadership toolkit. Whether you're looking to refine your approach, solve specific problems, or inspire your team to new heights, we're here to guide you through the nuances of leading with impact. Join us on this journey to unlock the full potential of your leadership style. Today, we're focusing on a style that has been both praised and criticized over the years, autocratic leadership. This style has been used by leaders from Napoleon Bonaparte to Elon Musk, and it's characterized by centralized control and decision-making. You're right, Ed. Autocratic leadership is a style where one leader exercises complete authoritarian control over a group or an organization. The leader makes all the decisions with little to no impact from the team members or stakeholders. It really comes in handy when you're talking about quick decision making or high accountability in maybe emergency situations, for example. This style is not suitable for a holistically healthy work environment, and it's also not sustainable. And the impact of autocratic leadership on an organization can be both positive and negative, depending on the overall goal. On the positive side, it can lead to efficient decision-making and execution, especially in situations requiring quick action. The other side, it can also foster a toxic, destructive organization culture, increase stress, lower satisfaction, and increase overall employee turnover. Absolutely. Audiocratic leadership, again, is great for the decision-making, great for the end, really helpful when you have emergency situations. However, there is a huge downside. It might also prevent the consideration of diverse solutions and potentially weaken the team cohesion and trust. From a problem-solving perspective, autocratic leaders lean heavily on their own insights, knowledge, and ethical compass, drawing primarily from personal experience and expertise. This approach typically excludes team member participation in the decision-making process. Absolutely, and regarding its impact on workplace culture, this type of leadership creates a highly structured environment. It can also lead to significant stress and mental health challenges for employees. This style, again, might not be the best fit if you're trying to foster retention, engagement, or professional development. Exactly, Dee. Therefore, it's essential to reserve autocratic leadership for those situations that demand it, where there's immediate action, where there's emergencies, or there's major transformational project needs. However, it needs to be ensured it's applied thoughtfully and judiciously. Autocratic leaders generally create a work culture where a clear hierarchical structure with the, them as the leader at the top. Communication often flows one way from the leader to the team, and team members have little to no say in the decision making. This can lead to lower motivation, higher stress, and disinterested employees. However, as we've indicated, it can be beneficial in the advice for time execution and quality of work are essential to success. So Dee, what are some specific roles you see where autocratic leadership has been pivotal to success? Great question, Ed. We see this type of leadership in military operations, emergency situations, and certain healthcare procedures. Well, the style has its place in those high stake environments by ensuring that quick decision making and clear direction. It's also critical for leaders to balance this approach by being receptive to new insights and perspectives that aren't necessarily their own. However, the impact of having a leader who lacks that necessary qualification in such roles can be profoundly negative, underscoring the need for competent leadership, even in audiocratic settings. So Dee, have you ever witnessed or experienced this type of environment or leadership situation? Yes, I have had high pressure moments where the style was absolutely necessary. However, I do not feel this style is sustainable if your goal is to grow or to be inclusive for individuals, for example, with neurodiversity. I've worked under various leadership styles, and I found that this approach was not a good fit for me personally. It sometimes made me anxious, and I felt undervalued, which was very challenging for my own mental health. I often felt like I was an outsider and overlooked, and my opinion didn't matter. 
the gift from this experience was that it really helped me realize that this leadership does not align with who I am and my preferences. I do understand that it is needed in certain situations. So it was a valuable lesson in identifying the qualities I value in an effective leader and really steering me towards those more positive and inclusive leadership approaches. How about you, Ed? Do you have any good stories? Let's see. I can think of a few. Beyond some small military experiences where it took me quite a while to understand the need and value of such a hierarchy, and there really is, I've had several corporate experiences where other leadership styles may have been a little bit more effective and productive, especially over the long term. These environments were always tense, unhealthily competitive, and unhappy. As I reflect back, unless an organizational crisis, I have rarely seen an instance where this leadership style is the best approach for driving progress. Even when in organizational crisis mode, which in my experience is a relatively regular occurrence, just consider the Great Recession and COVID as a couple of extreme examples, other leadership styles have been much more effective than an autocratic in similar situations. So in alignment and reinforcement of these insights, when using autocratic leadership, it's crucial to communicate decisions clearly and assertively, preferably without aggression. And it's also important to listen to your team members. Listen to their feedback, even if their input isn't used in actual decisions. I agree wholeheartedly, Dee. This helps maintain morale and prevent resentment while allowing the benefit of a qualified and well-experienced leader to navigate quickly and decisively down the paths and around the obstacles to achieve your business success. Despite the potential drawbacks, audiocratic leadership can offer several benefits. It can lead to the efficient and quick decision-making and high accountability needed to accomplish things fast. To add a few key success tactics that can enhance and improve these outcomes, be sure to provide a clear picture of the organization's goals up front and continuously. Also, ensure there are formal and informal channels of communication. Regular communication so everyone stays aligned and continuously feels that they are part of the overall mission. Finally, our recommendation, use this style only when and where necessary. We also recommend exploring other leadership styles that may just enable better short-term performance while enabling continuously improving long-term performance. Audiocratic leadership is a powerful tool that, when used appropriately, can lead to incredible short-term results. That wraps up today's episode of Leadership Styles. We hope you've gained some valuable insights into enhancing your leadership approach and unlocking your team's potential. I'm Ed Jurecki. And I'm Dee Hope. Thanks for tuning in. The essence of great leadership lies in your actions and your attitude. Until next time, keep leading with purpose and passion.